people are interested, people are asking in the comments about what's next for Swift Playgrounds. I don't know, but I'm gonna discuss why I think Apple is on a trajectory towards more feature updates than previously with Swift Playground. Let's dive in. All right, WWDC is right around the corner. Will Swift Playgrounds get any love this year? And if so, what do I actually wanna see in an update? Well, this is a tricky question because Swift Playgrounds is a small niche product for Apple that Apple doesn't need to push updates to to please the masses, right? iOS, iPad OS, the iPhone, iPad Max, you, Apple needs to keep updating these things on a pretty fast cadence because people want those updates. Swift Playgrounds is so small that it's not really covered by the media. And as a result, there's really no rumors, there's no expectation and if it doesn't get updated most people aren't gonna notice i will notice and i'm sure if you're watching this video you will notice we can look at the historic track record from swift playgrounds swift playgrounds was first announced in 2016 and it has been updated every year on a cadence similar to ios and uh, Swift as well. But here's the thing, up until Swift Playgrounds 4, those updates really were just to build in compatibility with the new iOS versions or the new Swift language versions, which means one of two things. Either we're gonna have another several years before we get another major update to Swift Playgrounds, or Apple has changed its philosophy on Swift Playgrounds because maybe Swift Playgrounds 4 is a small step in a larger plan. And that's my hope. I hope that we're gonna see an update at WWDC and in a few minutes I'll tell you what I hope to see. But let me first tell you why I think that Apple has changed their philosophy around Swift Playgrounds. First, Apple uses Swift Playgrounds as the tool for students to use when they submit an app for the challenge to get an invite into WWDC. So this year's challenge was to build an app using Swift Playgrounds and you would submit that to Apple. If you were selected, you would get a ticket to WWDC and some some swag and some, some stuff. They just announced the winners this week. So that means that they believe in this product. But even more than that, the biggest sign to me and the biggest surprise to me was when they gave Swift Playgrounds 10 to 15 second recap of what it can do during the iPad event in March of this year. Because they didn't have to do that. It's not a developer event, it's a that, that event is for consumers, right? It's for people to see the new iPad. So this is specifically an event for consumers, not for developers. And they're talking about how awesome Swift Playgrounds 4 is, and specifically how you can build apps on the iPad and release them to the App Store. And I think that because of that change in perspective, and because of that specific moment, I think Apple's philosophy around Swift Playgrounds has changed to the point where they believe that they can mold this platform into something that attracts a broader audience to not just iPads, but to Swift. And you know, if people are developing on Swift, people are going to develop more apps for the iOS store and that is always gonna be good for Apple. So what do I want to see in the next update for Swift Playgrounds? If you've watched my channel, you know that I am a hobbyist. I'm a self-taught hobby programmer and I lean towards game development, although I'm not opposed to trying app development at some point in time, but game development is what I enjoy and that's what I spend my time doing. So obviously the wants that I have for Swift Playgrounds are rooted in that philosophy of game development. And if you watch a couple of videos ago, I talked about how Swift Playgrounds is really anti-game developer. And that's really true. I do believe that Swift Playgrounds does not want to support game development, at least in its current state. And I don't know if that's a deep rooted philosophy at Apple or if that is like, just because it was the easiest MVP product that they could get out. And these are the three things that I want in a future version of Swift Playgrounds. Number one is that Swift Playgrounds 5 should have a scene editor. 
something that allows you to get the ideas onto your screen visually to help build the scenes and the worlds that you want to see. I think Apple could take this a step further and provide some building blocks and some assets and some, some really simple generic things to help new developers learn how to use the scene editor and maybe even take it even a step further and build this kind of stuff into their little code projects that are also included in Swift Playgrounds. The only problem there is that it may bloat the app to a really large size and that could be a problem, but maybe it could be like an extra download or something, you know, there's, there's ways around this. Number two is that Apple needs to if they're gonna take game development seriously on Swift Playgrounds, they need to be able to implement Game Center and game controller support and in-app purchases. Because those are really the key fundamental things for game development, right? You need to have leaderboards, you need to have achievements. A lot of people want to have controller support, especially if you're allowing people to build universal apps for iPad or tvOS or macOS. They want to be able to use a controller for those things. And finally, number three, source control. Yeah, I did a video a few weeks ago on working copy and yes, it works really well. You know, yeah, I could see myself using it and being happy with it, but if I can use a first party solution, I will choose a first party solution. The only reason I looked and found working copy was because a first party solution for Swift Playgrounds does not exist. Those three things would make game development a lot easier on the iPad. And I think that, you know, maybe not this year, but at some point in the future, we will see some of these things come to the iPad. It's just a matter of time. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Here's a playlist for the game that I built using Swift Playground so that you can see the whole process from the start all the way to the finish. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.